Uh, welcome! Sony presented three new smartphones and we want to take a look what is new in those. So let's get started. So first I want to talk about the successor of the Xperia 10 Mark II because no one is really talking about the 10 Mark III. Everyone is talking about the flagship devices because those have the new technologies and very exciting technologies. But I want to start with the 10 Mark III. This is the 10 Mark II, but the 10 Mark III will basically look the same. So you will have the Full HD front OLED display, HDR compatible and the glass back, a Gorilla Glass 5, I think it is, and the triple lens setup on the back. You will also get on the Xperia 10 Mark III. What they upgraded there, are some subtle things. I don't think they upgraded the speakers, though some state that they have stereo speakers. I didn't read anything on the Sony page, so I think I have to just think and assume that they have only this one bottom firing speaker then on the 10 Mark III as well. The camera system has not really been improved. There has been like a bigger aperture for the main camera, but the sensor size of the main camera still remains the same. The uh, aperture is now f1.8 instead of f2.0, so not much has changed in this regard. But Sony promises to have been uh, updating the camera software itself. And I hope we will see also not the basic camera application that we have here on the Xperia uh, 10 Mark II right now, but we will see also the basic uh, based on the Photo Pro app. That would be really, really awesome. Otherwise, they promised to update the algorithms inside. So HDR is something that you can expect being better right now with the Xperia 10 Mark III. And of course, also stabilization, especially in low light and during or due to software optimizations, it should run a lot better than on the Xperia 10 Mark II. This is something they have to had to improve on, and I think it's a very good thing they did so. Otherwise, basically the same design. Uh, the also, of course, as it is the same design, the same housing. You get the IP65 and 68 rating. Still, there's not much that has been changed in regards to this. When we come now to the flagships. I don't want to talk about all the specs. You can read the specs, Snapdragon 888, what is it, 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of internal memory. All these things you can re read somewhere else or just watch Sony's announcement. They have all the specifications also there. What I want to talk about is some things that are interesting for me and maybe interesting for you as well. The camera system. So let's put this away, uh, put this aside and go to my Xperia uh, 1 Mark II that I have here. So the predecessor and what we will see here on the Mark III is basically almost the same design again, same size, nothing much has changed in this regard. But on the back, you can see here on the back we have a triple or four lens setup, actually it's a triple lens setup but with the 3D time of flight sensor as well. Uh, that allows us also to zoom in, the telephoto one is the big major change that you can see in terms of lenses not in terms of sensors, because in terms of sensors, Sony did a bit more and a big upgrade. You can read about it all um, across the board as well. But what I find more interesting, and I will come to the camera system later, is the software. Because I was complaining about it before and I had made a predictions video about the Xperia 1 Mark III and I was complaining about this software. This is the Sony default camera application and now it's focusing on my eyes, now it's focusing on, yeah. Uh, usually I'm re recording this with the Xperia 1 Mark II or the Xperia 5 Mark II, but as I want to show them right now, I'm using my Fujifilm X-S10 right now, so uh, yeah, excuse the focusing issues. <laughs> so what we will see in terms of camera system is finally, finally, this default camera application will be history. Sony introduces a new camera software that is basically nothing else than the auto mode that you have on the Photo Pro app. So let's go here in auto mode and this is the auto mode of the Xperia Pro app, uh, Photo Pro app and this will be the basic mode. So that means this 
with slightly different controls, more controls looking towards the default camera application will be the new default camera application on the Sony flagship devices at least. I'm not sure about the 10 Mark III yet. And the cool thing is that it is based on the Photo Pro app, so all the good things about the Photo Pro app and processing of the Photo Pro app will be included in there, plus all the automatic stuff that you might need for or that might, might know from the default Sony application will be there as well, without the clunkiness and yeah, the old styling of the Sony default application camera app. Then one thing is also very interesting, it will have a video mode because it has to replace the old Sony application, it will have a video mode. And this is one I'm so exciting about it, excited about it, because I really, really hope they improved stuff there uh, in terms of yeah, vlogging setup, what I do usually with my Sony devices. So one thing that I see in photo mode already in the screenshots and in some presentations that I show, um, can also show you right now, some photos here, is it will in photo mode have a bokeh option, easy option to get like a nice portrait shot. Uh, so the, the modes that you have on the default Sony application where you can get into mode and where you can choose between the different modes, these are gone for now, but you still have like a portrait mode, like a bokeh mode it's called, where you can have, it probably will work on uh, people, but also on objects as well, where you have this nice background blur. So is it really necessary with the sensor size this big, one over 1.7 inch sized sensor, it should be not a problem to also get natural bokeh if you get closer to a subject or an object. But yeah, this is one of the improvements that you will get in the basic application, but also video mode. And video mode is very interesting because I hope really that Sony implemented external audio recording in video mode as well. So you don't have to rely only on the internal uh, microphones. They are good and there's a wind filter as well, but nothing beats an external microphone that you can plug in via the headphone jack that is still available, of course, on the Xperia uh, 1 Mark III as well as the 5 Mark III because this is one very interesting move from Sony. They also announced the 5 Mark III, the successor of the 5 Mark II, uh, at the same time with the One Mark III. Very interesting from Sony. So instead of waiting half a year for announcing or releasing the next phone, they are releasing all of them at the same time or announcing them at the same time. I hope the release will be also at the same time. Then what is also interesting is, I'm looking at my cheat sheet right now, uh, the Photo Pro app uh, will be integrated then in the basic mode or it will not be like because the basic mode is an additional tool, addition to the Photo Pro app, you don't have to have two separate apps, I think. It will be one app that has a basic mode and a pro mode app. Maybe there will be a different link still, or you will have the option for, if you press the shutter button, which is still available on the uh, One Mark III, uh, of course, it will probably allow you to also say, I want to go directly into the Photo Pro mode and not only uh, stay in the basic mode. This is also very interesting. Let's talk a little bit about hardware. Let me scroll down a bit here. We want to talk about the biggest thing, the biggest change ever that I predicted also. You can see my prediction video. It's a variable periscope zoom lens. I was a little bit too optimistic maybe. I was thinking about yeah, really optical zoom. So we have like one photo length and it can then smoothly optically zooms to a maximum photo length. This is something that we have to wait for the Xperia 1 Mark IV or maybe a software update because technically Sony says it is possible but we didn't activate it right now because we still have a little bit of struggle in terms of uh, yeah, hardware and uh, reliability of this technology. So technically it might be possible already with the technology they presented in the Xperia 1 Mark III that is like a lens that can move a little bit or lenses that can move a bit to change between two different photo lengths, 70 millimeters and 105 millimeters. 70 millimeters I think is three times zoom and 105 millimeters five times zoom is, I think. Someone can do the math and write it down in the comment section. And these are the photo lengths. So basically what you get is like three sensors, technically four, 3D time of flight sensor, but I don't count it in. Three sensors, the main sensor, basically the same, they upgraded the sensor slightly, so uh, this uh, one probably is also updated. All the sensors, the super wide angle or ultra wide angle 
and the new Tele one are now Sony Exmor RS sensors. So um, how they're called stacked uh, CMOS sensors uh, so that uh, less noise, faster readout speeds. This allows not only for the main lens to have 20 frames per second burst shooting, but also the other lenses have maybe not 20 frames per second burst shooting, but better burst and autofocus as well, of course. And they have the new uh, dual um, uh, dual pixel face detection autofocus, which is also pretty awesome. So all the lenses have this now in common, all Sony sensors and uh, better low light capabilities with those because of the Exmor RS sensor and also better algorithms for um, uh, counting stuff. So if you're doing a burst shot, like 20 frames per second, I can show you this in uh, the Photo Pro app. If we go in there, no. There we go. Uh, if I go into the, where is it? Burst mode, continuous high burst mode. What I can do is like uh, really, really shoot like crazy. So it's taking shots right now. And I have like shot two, 200 shots or something like this. Uh, and yeah, this is really, really awesome. You can see all the shots here and I can scroll through them. No, I can scroll through them here. And you see nothing much is changing here in terms of shot, uh, shots because it detected my eye, of course, and is focusing on my eye. So this is pretty awesome. But what Sony does right now with the, uh, this is one Mark II, of course, with the one Mark III is they improved it even more in low light, especially where it reduces the noise even in this burst shots by taking four exposures, basically, and then putting them together. And because it's four exposures and you know noise is random, they can then with software eliminate the noise a little bit more so you get better noise reduction in low light shots in burst mode on the Xperia 1 Mark III. And uh, this also um, should work not only on the main lens but also the other lenses that have also faster uh, burst mode as well. Uh, Sony also does uh, this only for low light shots, not for daylight shots, which is a bit weird because I think in daylight shots it could also be good, but maybe they have still some problems uh, regarding this and uh, yeah, uh, processing of this much of data or reading out of from the sensor. Maybe the sensor is not capable of doing it because if you have like this four additional shots, so what they actually do is like taking 80 frames per second and then calculating it down to 20 frames per second. And yeah, this is yeah, four by four um, times uh, 20 is what they actually have to shoot if it's really true what they claim. Um, would be awesome as well. Anyway, all this works with autofocus, eye detection, real-time audio, uh, real-time eye de tracking, but apparently only on the one mark two, uh, one mark three, not on the five mark three that will have object tracking but not eye tracking, real time eye tracking when doing the bursts. This is at least what I, but I think it has uh, this on the one uh, on the five mark two. So I'm not sure because there's DP review saying this, then there's Sony claiming we have real time audio, uh, real time eye tracking. Uh, we will see what will happen. Maybe it's some translation error on the German website of Sony that I was reading. Uh, then what do we have? Uh, we have um, also object tracking, which is pretty nice, which is, I think, is it something new? I'm not sure. I did not see it on PhotoPro, at least. If I can click on an object and then track it. Uh, I think in the menu there was some kind of object tracking, or it was at least in the default Sony application already that you have like object tracking enabled. Um, I don't remember, but I think there was object tracking already in Sony phones before. So it's great that it is a bag in action. What Sony has improved upon is also low light uh, capabilities for video. So they claim that now in video mode, they have a no, uh, now called flawless eye mode where the stabilization is better and should also in low light always result in sharp eyes or sh sharp faces. Um, which is, I think, also a pretty awesome technology. Sony is a little bit vague sometimes in describing their technologies and showing it off. So we have to wait a little bit to see how this will work out. And of course, we have to wait for the devices because, yeah, I think this is the One Mark 
two it has it took like four months for it to be released and i think we have to wait for the uh, one mark three and the five mark three as well for a few months before we can really tell what's going on uh, how it will look like and this is one of the downsides of sony they have make huge announcements and then you have to wait four months and then people probably have forgotten already all the hype about the new phones but i really really think that this might be a killer phone it has some slight subtle changes only i would say i like the, i like the new display that has like a brighter display 4k 120 frames per second very very cool and i hope it is brighter as well as this one here uh, it's one of the best displays we cannot we can't argue about this one of the best displays on the back the periscope zooms uh, stuff and all the new lenses and better uh, noise reduction and so on i also like it but it's not like a huge step forward where when they put like a one inch sensor that is rumored to be in the p50 huawei p50 the one inch sensor inside of the uh, one mark three then i would say it's like shut up and take my money but in this case it is the same one over 1.7 inch sized sensor which is now in the flagship department getting a bit small i would say because all the other sensors samsung sensors especially uh, xiaomi and huawei they're using bigger sensors that have better low light capability they don't have this 20 frames per second burst shooting mode that sony extra developed for the one mark ii and probably also wants to keep for the one mark three uh, for this reason and there's only some software optimizations on it but what i fear for existing one mark ii and five mark ii owners is they don't have a compelling reason to upgrade to a five mark three or a five mark uh, one mark three because there's not much of a huge improvement the only improvement that would be and i guess it is sony sony did this in the past already almost always is like no software updates so we will be stuck with the sony default camera application on the one and five mark ii and we have to upgrade to the five mark three or the one mark three to get the new basic photo application that's based upon photo pro with probably better video stabilization and video mode with the probably better photo taking capability which is almost pure uh, software there's of course hardware stuff as well like the new sensors that have faster readout speeds to enable this uh, less noise uh, in photos and better noise reduction in photos and uh, those algorithms but still it's a little bit sad to see that one good thing is stereo speakers still on the front of the device even more improved stereo speakers 360 uh, reality audio will be now available for the one mark free at least on the speakers you don't have to plug in your headphones which is also i think very very cool then there's some other things like uh, gaming optimization so you now have the option of course for gaming better voice control if you want to chat with people there's now 120 frames per second recording of your games as well so if you are a streamer and want to record games you have this ability as well now and they have uh, uh, yeah still the the heat protection system where they just don't charge the internal battery but they just power the phone if you want to play with the cable attached longer sessions no issue with this and talking about the battery all the phones uh, one mark free five mark free and ten mark free will get 4500 milliampere hours batteries this is awesome because we will get longer battery lives especially on the uh, one mark three with this big 4k oled screen with 120 uh, hertz you need a big battery and i think 4500 milliampere hours might be even not enough maybe 5000 would be better but the five mark two had already 4000 milliampere hours we'll get an upgrade to 4500 milliampere hours with the five mark three and has 120 hertz um display i think it will be the same display maybe slightly bit brighter than on the 5 mark ii but i don't expect much uh, change especially after sony just announced the 5 mark iii only a couple of months later after the 5 mark ii has been released so i don't think they had the time to improve the display so much on the 5 mark iii so this is basically everything i want to talk about a bit about the limitations of the 5 mark iii still it is basically the same that you have on the 5 mark ii so you don't have wireless charging wireless charging will be on the five on the one mark three not on the five mark three uh, you don't have the 
the real time uh, eye tracking in video mode, I think it is. I'm not sure because Sony claims it is there on the 5 Mark III. So keep, keep this, uh, check this on your own eventually or keep an eye on this. Keep an eye on this, yeah. Uh, no 3D time of flight sensor on the 5 Mark III because on the uh, 1 Mark uh, II and 1 Mark III we will have the 3D time of flight sensor. That might help in darker situations and focusing but uh, honestly, I did not see much difference between the 1 Mark II and the 5 Mark II, so I don't think there will be much difference in these uh, regard in this regards uh, on the um, freer Mark III um, line of uh, Sony phones. No upgraded speakers on the 5 Mark II is a little bit of a disappointment because 40 percent louder speakers and better speakers on the 1 Mark III is I think a good argument also for the 5 Mark III, but the 5 Mark III doesn't have it, so we will keep the old speakers. Again, I think they're rushing the 5 Mark III a little bit to market because they have the camera system ready, so they just have to replace the module basically and leave the red and the chip, of course, Snapdragon 888, and maybe more RAM and, and the internal space, and that's it. Um, no upgraded speakers, no wireless charging. It will maintain, of course, the headphone jack. Where is my 5 Mark? two device so i can show it to you even with the original sony case here which is also nice because i think if you bought a sony uh, device the mark ii device and want to upgrade to a mark iii device you can keep the case and it should fit even maybe the camera not completely we'll see it's a bit lower i think but almost should fit with the old uh, cases as well so the 5 mark ii is a very nice device and the 5 mark iii will be a nice device as well but even a minor, more minor upgrade, uh, basically only the camera system will be upgraded on the 5 Mark III, the rest will stay the same. And on the 1 Mark III we get a little bit more updates. Software updates of course are on both the same, the 5 Mark III and the 1 Mark III will get the same software. So I think I talked enough now, that's everything for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching, if you have some questions some comments you can write them down in the comment section if you have some other rumors or saw some other pictures that are that you want me to comment on just write them down that's everything for this video hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching until the next time